What does binge watching Netflix and having a great conversation have in common? Now, before we get to today's topic, thank you so much for joining us here on Espresso with Sky. My name is Sky, and this is my sidekick, Chewy. Mm. Now, if this is your first time joining us today, or if you haven't done so yet, go ahead, hit subscribe, smash that notification bell, and if you want to help us out, go ahead and hit the like button below. Now, if you really want to help us destroy the YouTube algorithm, go ahead and leave a comment below. And if you don't know what to comment about, what was that, Chewy? Ah, Chewy says, write down your favorite movie of all time in the comment section, and you're gonna help us out there anyways. All right, so let's get into today's topic about binge watching Netflix or any type of series and having great conversation. What do they have to do in common? So let me start off by telling you guys a story. Now, way back when, when I was in Vancouver, Canada, uh, every year they had something called the Festival of Lights. And this was a fireworks competition where countries would come and participate. 200,000 people would go down to the beach downtown and we would be watching this fireworks show. Amazing. And it was like for three weekends and then there'd be a champion and whatever it is. It was so amazing. But the thing that everyone hated was going home. Why? Imagine 200,000 people walking at the same time up the street. Now, me, my brother, my brother's friend, we're like, oh my goodness, it's just too hectic. So while everyone's walking the big major street, the three of us decide to go up an alley, right? It wasn't like a super dark alley. It was dim, but it wasn't super dark. And we weren't really scared because my brother's a big guy. And then my brother's friend, even bigger guy. So we're walking up and we're just talking. And then behind us, we can hear someone like pushing a grocery cart. So it's probably like a homeless person or something like that, right? So as we're talking, talking, we can hear the grocery cart getting closer and closer, right? So we're not scared. It's more of like, okay, it's probably a homeless person. Just let her pass, let them pass. And then, you know, we can move on. So I turn around, I see this old woman, homeless woman, and she's, a, you know, she's getting closer and closer. So I move out of the way. And then she looks at me and says, Sky, Sky, is that you? And I'm like, uh, and my brother's like, what? And it's kind of like, do I know you? And she says, you were my dog. So now me and my brother and the friend were just like, okay, let's get out of here. This woman is crazy. So we about to turn around, just keep walking. And she said, no, 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 I can prove it to you. And we're kind of like, oh my gosh. And she says, when you were bad, I used to hit you over the head with like the metal leash and you have a scar behind your left ear. And then me and my brother stop because we both know I have a scar behind my left ear. So now it's kind of like, what the heck is going on? And she says, I have one more thing to tell you. And we're kind of, I'm like, it's, it's interesting because I'm intrigued but scared at the same time. But I'm like, she goes, come closer. I was like, okay. And then she says, well, you know what? I'll tell you that next time. <laughs> okay, so don't worry. I'll, I'll finish the story another time. Now tell me guys, how angry are you if I, what I just said, let me tell you what she said next time. We'd be like, what? What do you mean? Did you, did you just tell us the rest of the story. And don't you hate when people do that to you? Hey. Yeah, what's up? Uh, nothing. You're like, what? Come on, what are you gonna tell me? We hate it when people do that, right? Why am I leaving you a cliffhanger at the end of this story? Why? It's because people love and remember stories. Stories is one of the biggest parts of our lives. Ever since even the caveman days, they told stories through paintings. They told stories from generation to generation to generation. They tell stories when radio came out. They told stories through TV and movies and Netflix. Stories are being told all the time. Not only are they entertaining, sometimes they make us think deeper. They give us a message. Uh, it tells us what the current situation, political system, political situation or religious situation is going on. And we love it. And we remember all these things. We have to realize that stories are so important to us. They're significant in our lives. We are compelled to go towards stories more than anything else. 
And this is why, just like the story I told you, I stopped it at the end. You're like, well, what happened? And what happens? You watch the next episode. At the end of the next episode, oh, what happens? You have to watch the next episode. This is how important stories are to us. Uh, way back decades ago, there was a study called the Significant Object Study. And what someone did was they took 200 objects, they bought 200 objects at around $128 US, which means less than a dollar each. So really, really cheap things. And the next thing he proceeded to do was find 200 authors to write about each and every one of these items. Okay, so what happened? Then after they got the stories, they put each of these items onto an auction website where people will bid for them. Question, how much did they sell it for altogether? Remember, bought it for 128 US dollars. How much did they sell it for? $8,000. $8,000, guys. This is how much stories matters to human beings. It matters to us. We want to hear stories. We remember them. It touches us. It moves us. It makes us think, oh, yeah, this is why this is so significant more than anything else. What about audition shows? Don't you guys watch like American Idol, uh, X Factor, The Voice? When do we root for these contestants? It's especially when they have a story behind it. Like they were homeless, they had no money, but they just worked all day just to work on their singing and this is where they are today. And when we see these stories, we hear these stories and we see them on TV, we're like, oh, I hope this person wins. Even if they're not the best singer, even if they're not the best singer, we are attached to them, why? We remember them. The other people that don't have stories, we don't remember, what, who was that guy? Oh yeah, because there's so many good singers in the world. What are we looking for? We're looking for the ones that have a story behind them. So now that you know that stories are really important to us and we remember them, what does this have to do with great conversation? Well, let me ask you a question. Have you ever been in a conversation that is boring, you didn't want to be there, or you're counting the time of when can I leave this conversation? Or, oh, maybe there'll be something more exciting on YouTube or on Netflix. Have you ever been in a conversation where you're trying to tell a story or you're trying to tell something that happened and no one's interested? Well, here's one way to know that if the art of conversation has died. Go to a restaurant, take a look at a family, and four of them will be sitting around a table and what are they all doing? They are all on their phones. Take a bunch of friends, take them to a restaurant, take them to a cafe, what are they doing? They're taking pictures, they're not talking to each other, they're writing their posts down. The art of conversation has died. Conversation is one of the greatest things that we have between two people and it should be memorable. So what does that mean? Now that we know that stories are important, we need to know that you need to be able to have conversations also in story form. And when it's in story form, people will remember and people will be going, what? No, no, what happens next? What happens next? It'll be a memorable conversation and a fun, exciting, and something that people want to come to you even more and talk to you. So let me give you two tips today on how to have a lot of good stories in your conversations, okay? Storytelling is another talk within itself. I'm gonna talk about two things that can help you out to have more stories, okay? First one is this, write down your stories. And you're like, I don't have any stories to write down about. Well, let me tell you, every story you can write down has one thing in common. So I want you to think about this in your life. Think about every single story that has a strong emotion. Super sad, super angry, super happy, super relieved, super scared. All those types of stories are memorable. Why? Because it invokes a shocking reaction. But if you talk about a story that doesn't have a shocking reaction, what does that mean? People aren't gonna get shocked by it. It's like, oh, I went to the store and I bought a chocolate bar. Are you excited? And the answer is no, because people don't wanna talk about those things. People wanna talk about real stories. What happened? Why do you feel this way? Oh, you know, why were you so angry today? And then you kind of tell a story, right? Like, hey, this is what happened. This is why I'm so mad and angry. Guys, I'm telling you this right now. Think about all those things that happened in your life that evoked a very strong emotion. So write them down and you will realize you have three to four times more stories than you thought you had. Second thing is this. My second tip today is tell your stories from your perspective, how you really felt. Problem is, is when people make the story kind of a factual, it just happened like this. What happened? I went to the store and then I bought a chocolate bar and it was expensive. 
and then I slipped on the floor. No. Guys, you have to tell the story. Now, I'm not going to say untruthful because it is truth and untruth at the same time. What does that mean? Well, is it factual? And the answer might be, it may not, it might be a little bit exaggerated. But why can you exaggerate when it's a story? Because it's your story. You have to tell and talk about what you really felt. If you were scared to death, then you tell them, I was so, it was the scariest thing I've ever, went, I've, I've been through. Why? That is your perspective and your feeling at that time. It's not lying, it's your perspective. People see things in different ways. And this is why it's so cool. Well, there's a movie out there called Vantage Point. Watch that movie. You'll get to see it from like three different angles. It's a really, really cool way of seeing perspective and how people feel, right? But either way, I want you guys to really tell it from how you felt. And when you really honestly tell how you really felt, what happens? People get engaged. That's why when you go on the internet, people aren't going to be looking at videos like, Oh, a normal day. Instead, they'll be like, greatest day of my life, worst day of my life, saddest day of my life, right? It's very extreme because they're like, oh, what happened here? Oh, slipped and broke my head, but they didn't really break their head. Oh, uh, breaking, viral, right? Smashing, and you're like, what? what? And everyone clicks on those because everyone's looking for a strong emotion, right? When you tell your stories, right? The YouTube and the algorithm and then the Instagram, they all got it right, right? They're they're allowing people to tell their stories exaggerated, but it's not really exaggerated, it's their story. But the good thing about our stories is, it's truth, meaning it actually happened. A lot of these stories on TikTok or like Instagram, whatever, they're making up stories of things that could happen or might, you know, some of them not even true. But when it comes to conversation between two people, these are real things that happen between two people or what happened to me or what happened to you. And when we hear it, we are engaged and we respond like, well, what happened next? <gasps> no, no, are you serious? And this is when you have great conversations, right? People, we need to learn how to story tell, which is another talk altogether. But the first two things I want you guys to do is number one is write them down. If you don't know what stories to write down, always think about any type of experience in life that gave you a strong emotional trigger. Second one is, tell it from your perspective how you really felt. It may not be true with other people, but it is true to you. And that's why it's okay to exaggerate and say, oh, I thought I was gonna die, because you really thought you were gonna die, right? So these are the two tips I'll leave you today to start engaging in some great conversation. And I hope it's something that you guys will really, really be able to, um, you know, really be able to, to take into your life and start great conversation with your friends and family. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. If you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe, smash that notification bell, and then like and comment below. And like Chewie said, what'd you say? Right, favorite movie, write down your favorite movie. Have an amazing week and we'll see you again. And maybe I'll tell you the answer another time. All right, everyone, great week and see you again. Bye-bye.